Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody, welcome back. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady with my co-host, JC. Such a pleasure to be back, Wendy, thank you. We're here talking about the state of the American manager, some, some quotes and information from Gallup, and really talking about the fact that management training is no longer optional if you want to not only keep your current employees, but attract new employees too. And JC just mentioned a little bit about, you know, employee well-being and how it is 100% connected to engagement. So let's dive into that a little bit more. And then I want to talk about in this section about, you know, what do employees wish their managers would do or maybe stop doing so that they would not be so annoyed that they're looking for another job. So talk to me a little bit more about some statistics on um, wellness and, you know, the the connection to engagement in, in the United States. Absolutely. Engagement and well-being, they've been a profound interaction overall. And we frequently think of engagement as something that occurs at work and well-being as something that occurs outside of work. But according to Gallup's research, a lot has been revealed that it's a false dichotomy. People's experiences at work have a huge impact on their lives outside of work. Employees who routinely experience significant degrees of burnout at work claim that their job is to blame. And it's tough for them to fulfill their family responsibilities. They're also 23% more likely, according to this Gallup poll, to attend, uh, uh, to rather, to visit emergency rooms uh, because they're not feeling well, Wendy. Overall happiness affects job life. And employees who are involved but not thriving are, believe it or not, 61% more likely to experience persistent burnout than those who are engaged and thriving overall. Yeah, absolutely. I see it all the time, just even with my friends. Um, and so, you know, I, a lot of people call me just because I am the HR lady and talking about workplace burnout. And I see people that have chosen to maybe just because of a special project work, um, you know, over time because they're so excited and passionate about that and they want to get it done. They want to succeed for the client or the customer or for their department. It's up to the manager that is say, hey, I know you're excited about this, but we want you to have a, a work life balance. Um, you can't take care or take advantage of employees because they're saying, put me in coach, put me in coach, because as a good coach, you would say you're in no problem, but you need to go home or you need to take a day off. And we will revisit this in the morning. And we have to, you know, I know many of our, our uh, listeners are, um, small business in small businesses as well as big businesses. But for the small businesses, you know, we're always competing against the big businesses. And so we sometimes want to do everything we can to keep our client happy. But you as a business owner and a, a leader and a manager, you need to say, I want to keep my client happy within reasonable expectations. And that means not abusing my staff. And even if my staff is, it's okay, it's okay. It's like, no, it's not okay because you're going to get burned out and burnout leads to um, people leaving your organization or worse, quitting and staying and taking your money and not actually satisfying the requirements of the job. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. And, and you know, talking about the Gallup report, Wendy, when, when they examine worldwide workplace data through the lens of engagement and thriving, the results are actually startling. I've got some interesting statistics here for you. When an employee talks about or thinks about their stress yesterday, 49% of employees are not thriving and not engaged, and 30% are thriving and engaged. When they think about anger yesterday, 24% are not thriving and not engaged, 11% are thriving and engaged. And when we think about health problems from the employee perspective, 16% are not thriving and not engaged and only 8% are actually thriving and engaged. So simply put, 
employees that are engaged in prospering have much less stress, anger, and health issues. And nonetheless, only 9% of employees worldwide are actually thriving and engaged, whereas the majority, 57% of the world's workforce, is not engaged or prospering. My head's spinning. I need a nap. Uh, <laughs> it's a, that's a that's a lot of statistics, and it's it's um, it's disturbing, and it's also just very sad that you know it is a worldwide issue. I do believe that um, in that same report of folks. By the way, you can get this on Gallup for free. It's State of the Global Workplace 2022 report. And so you can just go on their website and they'll send it to you. Uh, there's some great information. I mean, it's Gallup. Come on. They they do a lot of a lot of research. One of the things that I'm, I'm always interested in is when people talk about thriving or engagement or any kind of um, assessment, like what does that actually mean? You know, what does engagement mean when you ask your employees? So if you're going to take away from today and say, you know what, I'm going to do a little poll in my organization, please back up and get the information to be crystal clear, like what does engagement mean? Um, I was actually just putting together a presentation um, right before our, our session today, talking about engagement um, with a client, a uh, group of clients that I'm, I'm working on, a community project. And one of the things that I always say is, before you start rating people, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, thumbs up, thumbs down, highly engaged, less engaged, let's define what that actually means in terms that everyone who is completing that survey or assessment can actually understand. Otherwise, you're just throwing words out there and it doesn't really necessarily mean anything. Yeah, yeah, uh, 110%. Hey, uh, what what about pay, though? Uh, I, I don't want to go too far off the rails, but... Sometimes they say if you throw money at it, it can fix the problem, right? You know, I mean, everybody likes money, right? You can't pay your bills without money. So that's one thing there. Um, but, you know, like you said uh, already in 2021, uh, last year, state, I think it was the State of the American Manager um, report from Gallup said that only 20 percent, it will take more than a 20 percent pay raise for employees to jump ship. So, you know, 20% is a lot. Oh, and so big. if you have, you know, really engaged people and um, regardless of how you define engage, but if you have good employees that are happy where, where they're at and they know what you're doing, they're like, yep, I'm going that direction with you. It's going to take a lot of money to, to lure them to the next company. If it doesn't take a lot of money, then you've got a problem. And again, I'm going to say real quick before we wrap up this session um, is just in my, you know, friend group and, you know, 40 to 50 year olds is I know uh, whew, half a dozen of my close network that have changed jobs during the pandemic, really during the past year and a half that and they took a major decrease in pay oh, wow. because they said their job was just too stressful. And they're like, I will cut out costs. I will I will figure out a way to um, live without that 10, 20 percent pay because I've got to go to go to a company that sees me as a person and lets me have a life outside of work. So oh, it's absolutely. the opposite, you know, of that of that statistics. It's so, so true. With that said, um, what I wanted to talk about real briefly is what what do employees wish that the, their managers would stop doing? And that is stop, you know, making them worry, stop making them stress. Um, make sure you're a nice manager so they're not, you know, walking away from work every day, uh, anger or sad. So that sounds easier than done, but that is really where managers need to have management training of what the heck does emotional intelligence even mean? What does empathy mean? Yeah. Um, how how do I as a manager affect my my employees stress, anger and health like you've talked about? And so if you're interested in the specifics of that, everyone, please look up those Gallup uh, reports so that you can get the statistics and show them to your ownership team when you're trying to get more money or budget for uh, external help or even internal help. With that said, we'll be right back to section three of this five series podcast. 
Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.